Hi, Jeremy Simon here with 3D Universe. So still working on solutions that might help with the coronavirus situation, uh, things that could be 3D printed. Uh, in my previous videos, you might have seen this 3D printable mask, which is a modified version of the one that Copper 3D released. And uh, it involves thermoforming and uh, sort of shaping it to the face. And I was really hopeful. We've been making improvements, got a lot of good feedback from the community. But I gotta say, after all my testing and trying a, a number of different options, I'm really not confident that we're gonna get a really good seal on the face with this mask. As you can see, I even shaved so that I could properly test it, and uh, I'm still just not getting a really good seal. I've tried printing this at different sizes. I tried going back to the uh, adhesive foam padding as a lining, so it's a little bit softer than the TPU. Any way I do it, I'm just not getting a really good seal. Meanwhile, one of my customers uh, pointed out the design from uh, the doctors at a clinic in Billings, this design here, and uh, I think this design has a lot more promise. So I'll include the link to their website in the uh, video description. I printed this one in a uh, TPU-based material. Now, I used the copper 3D material again. They have one called MD Flex, which is a flexible, it's a TPU-based material, but it still has that nano copper additive for uh, you know, uh, helping with uh, antibacterial and antiviral properties, but that material is in very short supply, and once I go through the, the one spool that I have here, that'll be gone, so uh, I will be switching over to normal PLA uh, as the doctors that made this recommend. They say you can use PLA or ABS, so apparently standard materials are okay because it can be cleaned, you know, warm soapy water. Um, I also saw some medical professionals pointing out that they have disinfecting wipes at the hospitals that are extremely strong, so strong that they have to use gloves while handling them, and that if they just wipe these down with those wipes, they'll kill anything. They kill HIV, uh, they'll, they'll kill whatever's on them. So I think that's promising in terms of disinfecting something like this. So the design is really simple. It prints on the bed like this so that you can print it without supports. These, these angles are no problem. So it prints, there's no thermoforming involved and it makes a really good seal on the face, I think. As you can see, no fogging of the glasses. Somebody pointed that out in a previous video when I had facial hair that I was getting some fogging up there. This seems to work really well. Now, I don't have the proper kind of filtration material in here right now. Just for the testing, I used the uh, material from one of those reusable shopping bags. Uh, as somebody pointed out in a previous comment, we really don't know if that's truly the same quality material in terms of filtration as what's used in an N95 mask. So uh, this is just for a test. I actually found that the, uh, the, the same folks that designed this mask include a link where you can get the uh, actual N95 filtration material. It's a, a place called uh, Flowmark High Tech and uh, you can order them. They have uh, pre-cut squares, so it's a two and a half inch square that fits into here. They have pre-cut squares that they're selling in packs of 50. Uh, I think the price was something like $17.50, so very inexpensive. So I ordered a bunch of those. They have about a two to three day shipping lead time, at least as of today. That might get longer as demand grows, but uh, that seems to me like a really good solution. The way this works is, there's two pieces that get printed. There's just this mask piece that prints like that, and there's this little uh, frame for the filter that has a couple of bulges on the sides that help for a press fit to keep the filter in place. You just lay the square filter on the inside, like so. Take the other piece here and just push it in, and it holds the filter in place just like that. So it could not be easier for the design. There's four points to attach uh, elastic bands, which I haven't put on here yet, but that's obviously very easy to do. And then you have what seems to be a pretty solid option for an N95 mask. So I would encourage folks with 3D printers to investigate this design. I think it has a lot more promise than the one that I was testing before. And uh, so I will include those links and uh, share further uh, feedback as it becomes available on that. I've also been printing the face shields, which I also recommend that anybody with a 3D printer consider doing. These are very easy to produce. There are a number of good designs available on the internet. Uh, this is just a prototype that I did. That's why I'm not wearing uh, uh, latex gloves right now. Uh, you would want to wear gloves as you're assembling these and actually they get shipped disassembled, so you'd ship just the, the shield with the holes punched along with the assembled kind of headband and strap and let people attach the shields at the destination. 
the uh, shields, I, I used a uh, half a millimeter thick sheet of PET-G and I cut them on a laser cutter, uh, but there is actually a company that is offering pre-cut uh, plastic sheets specifically for this, which is the Budman Industries design. There are a number of good designs out there. Uh, Prusa Research has released a good one. Uh, this one, as I said, is from Budman Industries, and there are others. Uh, I like this one only because, again, they've partnered with a company, papergala.com. They are um, basically manufacturing these uh, plastic sheets ready to, to use with this design. So they're pre-cut, they're pre-hole punched, um, and uh, designed to fit right on this Budman Industries uh, sort of 3D printable headband, if you will. I just lined it with a strip of adhesive foam padding. Um, I just cut those. Uh, it's a nine inch long by three quarter inch wide strip of adhesive foam padding that fits right on the inside. And then half inch wide elastic bands. There's a little 3D printable clip that goes in the back to uh, allow you to adjust the, the uh, tension on the elastics. And that's all there is to it. So this, in combination with something like this, provides a nice solution, or so it seems. So if you have a 3D printer and you're looking to help out, my recommendation as of now is check out the mask from the Billings Clinic and check out uh, the option of making face shields, either the Budman Industries design or one of the other face shield designs available. Let's get as many of these into the hands of the medical professionals as we can. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you want to see further videos like this. Take care.